Let us pray. Oh God, be your spirit. Tell us what we need to hear. And show us what we ought to do to obey Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The second reading is Colossians 1, 24 through 29. I am now rejoicing in my sufferings for your sake. And in my flesh, I am completing what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is, the church. I became its servant according to God's commission that was given to me for you to make the world of God fully known. The mystery that has been hidden throughout the ages and generations but has now been revealed to his saints. To them, God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you. The hope of glory, it is he whom we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone in all wisdom, so that we may present everyone mature in Christ. For this I toil and struggle with all the energy that he powerfully inspires within me. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Thank God. The Apostle Paul says something rather unusual at the beginning of this. I am now rejoicing in my sufferings. <laughs> Yippee! <laughs> Let's all sign up for that. But throughout Colossians, the Apostle Paul encourages us to do things that we normally might not do on our own. And he says, my sufferings for your sake, that in my flesh... I am completing what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is the church. You know, that's not to say that what Jesus did on the cross wasn't enough. But Paul's afflictions are involved in bringing the good news and the reality of that into the people's lives in Colossae. These are the people that Paul is writing this letter to. And, you know, to rejoice in suffering as we're given to others, revealing the love of Jesus, revealing that great hope, is a very real way to see ourselves and see the world. But it's going to change who we are if we are going to care for others in a way that reflects how Jesus cares for us. You know, two weeks ago or so, we considered how th being thankful of thanksgiving is a different lens to view ourselves, review our life, the circumstances that we face. But it, this is to be willing to suffer for the sake of others. It's got what they call an attitude of gratitude for what Jesus suffered for us. And throughout Paul's letter, he continues to encourage the Christians in Colossae to take this kind of step. He invites them to drop the garbage that they've accumulated along the way so that their arms, their lives, their hearts can embrace the things that are of true and lasting value. That if we're going to experience Christ giving Himself for us, part of the path of that is given of ourselves for the sake of others. To experience His giving Himself to us so strongly that we would give ourselves to others. And that's going to change our lives. It's going to take us on a different path. But it's also going to touch the lights of others. Now, I've decided that the uh, statute of limitations of repeating uh, sermon illustrations expires at some point in time. And I showed you this photo back in 2012. That's a New York police officer with a man without shoes on a cold winter night in Times Square. 
That's uh, Larry DePrimo. And he had seen this homeless man, even as he saw a ton of them, during his shift. But this one stood out because it was freezing cold and he didn't have, he was barefoot. And what really drew attention to him was that people were walking by and kind of mocking him for not having shoes. And as he explained later, he asked him, if, do you have anything to wear? And he said, well, no, but God bless you, sir. He ran after the man. What's your shoe size? Size 12. And he ran to a new, nearby Skechers store. And he asked not for the cheapest. He asked for thermal socks and a pair of winter shoes that would last a long time. He dropped 100 bills on it after the employee hearing what he was doing applied his own employee discount to that purchase. And he goes out, and not only does he just hand the guy a bag with socks and shoes in it, but he kneels down and puts on the socks and the shoes for the man. And this is a picture that a tourist took. He didn't know that this picture was being taken. It was posted onto Facebook. And people were powerfully moved. But much more than the $100 he dropped on this, it cost Larry DePrimo to care for someone else. And as we talked about early, a couple months ago, to doing something for someone who cannot do something in return for you. You know, we may not be facing winter without home or shoes, but, you know, we, we, we do face some real difficulties, don't we? Troubles beyond our control, plenty of troubles we cause for ourselves, and there are also the troubles that others have inflicted upon us. You know, the news for years now has been filled with pandemics, sickness, death, wars, and suffering. We live in a world that's hungry for hope. You know, um, I, I, I love the time of Christmas and you know, the decorations and all, but somehow... If you're a person without shoes in Times Square in the winter, there are things more important than singing jingle bells. But the good news is that even in the midst of those dark times, we have a hope. And we are called to be a hope for the sake of others. The Apostle Paul uh, describes this as a mystery that has been hidden for generations a mystery that is being revealed to God's people and through God's people. Christ in you, the Apostle Paul writes, um, the hope of glory. You know, it is out of God's great love that, you know, it was while we were sinners. It was while we were stuck by ourselves, couldn't do anything about it ourselves, weren't worthy of it ourselves. It was then that Christ died for us. Out of compassion, Officer De Prima bought the homeless man boots. Out of compassion, the Christians and out of compassion for the Christians in Colossae, the Apostle Paul suffered that he might demonstrate them love and teach them and correct them, as he later describes this, that they might become mature in Christ. He goes on and he describes it as a commission that he has received from God. He saw his own suffering. He saw what he was going through. He saw the cost of what he was doing as part of Christ giving himself for the sake of the world, as completing Christ's affliction for the sake of his people, for bringing testimony of that. You know, that great view of the world, the weight of it on the Apostle Paul's heart, his 
encounter with Christ opened his eyes to see the world, to see himself, to see and understand his circumstances differently than he ever had. Because he began to see it through God's eyes, began to love it with God's heart. You know, well, a lot of us kind of feel secure and self-confident and self-sufficient. You know what the scripture is full of? God's heart for the broken, the suffering, for the widows, the orphan, for the people we pass every day. I believe that if we begin to see the world through God's eyes, we would cry out, Come, Lord Jesus, come! As the psalmist often arises, often says, when he writes about things that are wrong, Rise up, O God! Let your enemies be scattered. Let your way rule. I believe that if we really began to see ourselves, each other, and the world through Jesus' eyes, <laughs> our calendar would be full and our checkbooks would be empty because we would give ourselves to Christ's work in the world. Because the coming of Christ is much more than a holiday. In a world of great need, this is an incredible hope. The Gospel of John, as we read earlier, describes it as light that shines in the darkness. And guess what? The darkness does not win. The darkness does not overcome it. In this passage, it also speaks of it as a mystery that once was hidden, but is now being revealed. Christ in us, our hope for glory for, and hope for the world, as well as for ourselves. Now, the, the spiritual discipline of Advent um, wasn't part of any church I grew up with, but as I've grown older and uh, been part of a tradition that uh, practices it, I've grown to appreciate the need to consider that those spears haven't been beaten into pruning hooks. The swords have not been beaten into plowshares. Crying, tears, and death still exist. We're not at Revelation 21 where God wipes away the tears from every eye. And that tension can touch our heart, can touch our lives as we give of ourselves for God's purposes, definitely in our own life, but through that into the world. You know, the word Advent is you know, another one of those Latin words we hung on to, but it means coming, the arrival, the event of God showing up both in Bethlehem, as the Word was made flesh, but also Christ's second coming, where everything is restored, where God's shalom, His wholeness, His peace will reign. You know, it's for this that the Apostle Paul worked so hard. It's for this that he suffered so much, preparing people for the coming of Christ. His passion to share this news, to participate in unwrapping this hope and this gift, it cost him dearly. But he saw that as nothing compared to what he's able to share, to reveal what was once hidden, to proclaim, to teach, to warn that the world might experience hope. But one of the interesting things is that God's hope and love Always, I underline that in my notes. God's hope and love always includes changing us. <laughs> not just others, and not just our own circumstance. And that's perhaps the greatest of news. You know, we consider the, the prayer of a student, we've all done this, God help me pass this test. <laughs> 
What if we had been praying earlier that God would make us a better student and to study more diligently? Wouldn't that make a lot more sense? What if we prayed for our teachers? Wouldn't that help a lot more? (laughs) What if we prayed for serenity when we face things that we can't change, that we would be at peace? although so many things are wrong. But the good news is that we're transformed through the work of the Holy Spirit and our experience of the world around us is transformed because we begin to see through new eyes. As we become more mature in Christ, so many of the things and the people we once avoided become the very things that we seek. What one time we thought, well, there's no way I can do that, become the very thing that you do all the time. Whether that be given to everyone who asks, praying for those who persecute you, turn the other cheek, going the extra mile, forgiving as we have been forgiven. (laughs) You know what? We do face difficulties and situations that are bigger than us. Sometimes we pretend that they're not there, but they are. But remember, Christ in us is the hope of glory. Christ in us changes us. It strengthens us. It changes our path in life to the path of Jesus, of giving rather than receiving. Christ in Paul, (laughs) it transformed being locked in prison as being a whole new mission field for him. Christ in us also reveals difficulties to instead be in opportunities. You know, you've been at the beach, and some of you are water people, and there can be a great big wave that the surfer has been waiting for all day. But for someone who can't swim or can hardly swim, it can drown them. But someone who has practiced, someone who has been in those troubled waters, it's what they're waiting for. They take a couple strokes, then stand up on their feet, and they've got that board, and they are carving it all over the place. What would once have been hazardous becomes where we thrive. As we grow and we mature in his own maturity, the apostle saw it this way, that his difficulties, rather than his comforts, were the thing that revealed that he was serving Christ. Did you hear that? The apostle Paul saw in his difficulties proof that he was serving Christ rather than his comforts. Wow. (laughs) Wow, isn't that something? That being a servant of giving to others, of bending down to put socks on a cold man's feet, in Christ's name, was a fulfillment of his purpose, rather than a sign that he had failed. As we mature in Christ, we begin to see God's power rather than our own ability. We begin to trust in what God is calling for us to do than the way we've always done it. And we begin to discover that, you know those things that we always wanted? So many of them, many of them, not all of them, many of them weren't worth it to start with. You know, drive around your neighborhood some morning and see what's kicked out to the curb. (laughs) Many of the things that we once avoided become the things that we seek and that sometimes we ourselves will be in need of shoes on a cold winter night. Sometimes we're blessed to be able to give those shoes for others. But ultimately, our hope and the hope of the world is Christ living in us that we would give of ourselves 
for the sake of others as he has given himself for us. Just as Jesus gave himself for our sake, Christ and Paul led him to see even his suffering for Jesus' sake as a privilege. And you better believe that Christ in us will lead us to consider the needs of others more than of our own. Amen.